There are three factors that affect the rate of a reaction, temperature, concentration, and catalyst. In this video, I'm gonna go over how these alter the reaction rate as well as why. Before we can go over the why, you will need to have the three conditions required for a reaction to occur that I went over in my previous collision theory and reaction rate video, because we're gonna talk about how that factor that we changed altered one or more of these conditions. All right, so let's get started with temperature. So here are my little reacting particles, just like I had in the previous video. So I'm just gonna place them kind of in this tray. And my reactants are going to be the same thing I did last time, which was hydrogen and iodine. So my reaction is gonna be hydrogen gas, which is the little white one. So I'll just kind of place one here. And iodine gas and they will collide and break bonds with enough energy so that we produce products and we produce two hydrogen iodide molecules in the process. Again, so the goal here again is that these particles that I have collide, collide with enough energy, collide with the proper orientation so that bonds are broken and you reform and you make your products. Now, the question is, how does temperature alter that? Or what should we do to the temperature so that we can make this process happen faster? We're not gonna necessarily make more of the product, we're just gonna make it happen in a faster rate or a faster, uh, quicker amount of time. So think about what you would do to the temperature if you want to increase the rate. And the answer is you wanna increase the temperature. Now, why would increasing the temperature make the rate increase on average. So it makes the rate increase. So let me get those particles back out and let you kind of take a peek. So here are my reactant particles. I'm actually gonna take off the label. I just kept four of them left right now. And think about what temperature is. It's the average kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, these are gaseous particles. And if I increase the temperature, hopefully I won't knock one out of here, <laughs> they should have a higher average kinetic energy. So go back to these three possibilities and think about um, which one or more than one temperature when we increase it is altering. And the answer is that we are having more collisions so that this effect causes there to be more collisions. I think you can see that just from my little model here, okay, when I had this in here. But there also are gonna be more collisions with um, the necessary, and I'm not gonna have enough room, but with the necessary activation energy to break the bonds and create products. So this is usually represented on a graph. So let me show you the graph version of this. Let me slide this out. So here's my lower temperature. Okay, so remember that was where I was maybe moving the, the you know, particles, average kinetic energies like that. And then temperature two is where they have overall a higher, don't wanna lose one, that's why I don't wanna have them be too, too high of a temperature, has a higher average movement or average kinetic energy, I should say, not movement, average kinetic energy of those particles. Now, this is the most important thing. There is a set activation energy. Let's say it's right here, okay? So let's say this is the activation energy we need for the uh, particles of the reactants to collide and break bonds and make products, okay? So this is my EA, and this is in the previous video that I went over also. So this is my activation energy. And that's the activation energy I need. So on this axis, it's called fraction of molecules. So these are all the possible collisions, you know, when I was moving them like this, and then, all of this, okay, all of that area under the curve is if I move them at a higher temperature, which has a higher average kinetic energy. So the area under the curve are what are called like the effective collisions. And that's how many collisions will be effective at temperature one, which is the lower temperature. So you might also wanna write down that T1 is less than, okay, less than or lower than T2. So T2 is my higher temperature. And what happens is the average slides over. There's more that have, you know, there's more here that have a higher uh, average kinetic energy. And the result of that is this area under the curve gets much larger. 
And what that means is there's more uh, collisions that have the activation energy required to break the bonds. So this is, again, why we have sped up the reaction. It has a faster rate is because there are more collisions right here that have the activation energy necessary to create products, all right? So that's the first one, is temperature, and it has more collisions and more collisions with the activation energy uh, necessary to um, break the bonds. All right, next, temperature we did. So let's move on to concentration. So what about concentration? What we're gonna do is again, we want the reaction to go faster. Okay, we want a faster rate. We want the reaction to happen in a shorter period of time. So again, what would you wanna do with the concentration, do you think? And what would it alter? All right, so here we go. You're gonna to wanna to increase the concentration. A lot of times chemists use a bracket for concentration, so increase the concentration. And typically, okay, this is typically the rate increases. There are some exceptions. Um, rate increases, put a plural, rate increases. Now, why is that? So let me grab my little particles here. Here are my, oops, those are my products. Let me grab my reactions here. And I want to make products. Okay, so these are my products that I'm trying to make over here. Why would starting out with a higher amount of reactants, okay? Let me grab a whole bunch more here. Got to grab them all. They're all hiding from me over here. So why would having a, a larger amount of reactants at the start allow us to make products um, faster, okay? So kind of look again at this the way that's in here. I'm just going to kind of move it around. I didn't change the temperature. Okay, so I'm trying to move them about the same as my T1, okay? But kind of look at what, what you see changing. And the reason that it's going to have um, a higher reaction rate is because there are just plain old more collisions. And I hope you saw that with my little model, okay? And if there's more collisions, I guess we could also argue that they also might have the correct uh, orientation. Because remember, orientation was important too. So statistically, maybe we've also upped that some of them have the correct orientation to break the bonds. All right, let's go on to the catalyst then. And all we're gonna do, I'll give you a hint, we're just gonna add a catalyst, okay? So if we add a catalyst, how is that going to make the reaction go faster? So here are our choices again, and this one you might not have as good of a guess, but how would a catalyst affect this, okay? Usually you need to bring in another set of graphs. You gotta go back to these graphs from that previous video that I had. So what happens with a catalyst, okay? is we have this set activation energy, okay? To the top of there, that's a little off, but that's okay. So here's my activation energy for this reaction. And I'll talk about that being XOR endothermic. And then here is my starting point. Here is my highest energy state called the transition state. Again, I went over that in the previous video. There's my activation energy. Let me even label the same things I did in the previous video, transition state, transition state, where it's not really a reactant or a product, it's somewhere in the middle. And so those are the activation energies. And then let's do one more thing. Let's label which these are. So I used pink in the previous video, so I'll stick with the same colors. From here to here is the change in energy. And in this case, this enthalpy or energy change is negative. And, and from here to here, kind of again, where we started and where we ended, where we started, where we ended, okay? This change in enthalpy is positive. And that's the definition of this one being an endothermic reaction and this one being an exothermic reaction. And we're gonna come back to this in just a second with catalyst, okay? So what does a catalyst do to this graph? So I'm gonna pretend that my catalyst is, um, I'll just have to use kind of this same, I'll just switch to kind of this blue color here. So my catalyst comes in and all it does is it creates an alternative pathway. That's what it's called. So you still start and end at the same point, okay? But your activation energy here has been cut way down. So my activation energy, and then they'll say C-A-T with a catalyst, is much lower and it allows there to be an alternative, easier per se pathway to create products. And so the reaction's faster. 
And that doesn't matter if it's endothermic or exothermic. It just kind of cuts off and creates a lower pathway. Okay, kind of like this. And so then the activation energy for this one is still less. Okay, I'm going to draw it kind of dark here. That's my EA with a catalyst. And I've cut off and created a new pathway. Here's the most important thing I want you to write down besides that. Notice how there is no change in delta H for either one of these. There's no change in what's called the endothermicity, maybe, and exothermicity. There's no change in that energy overall. It's just creating a unique alternative pathway for that reaction to occur. So keep in mind, there is no change in to, the, to the overall ending and starting. It just creates the unique pathway. All right, so let's go over here and list this off. And then I'm going to show you one more thing on the other graph. We're going to come back to this graph too, okay? But let's just write this down first so we have this part done. So what happens is with a catalyst, you might want to write down that it um, lowers the EA, the activation energy, but I would write down by um, allowing what's called an alternative, alternative pathway, oops, pathway for the reaction. Now, let me show you on the temperature graph too, how it's kind of the same thing. So the other thing you might notice is you might see like how the catalyst changes or what changes sort of in this graph. So what the catalyst does is if it lowers the activation energy needed, that means like right here, maybe that's the energy we need with the catalyst to create a, you know, the chemical change. And so that means from here to here, so if this is my new activation energy with this alternative pathway, whether I'm at the lower temperature, okay, all of these collisions are going to be um, like effective in creating products or at my higher temperature, okay, all of these collisions are going to be effective. And I kind of went dramatic here. Um, all these collisions are going to be effective in creating product. And that definitely will speed up the reaction. So if I add a catalyst, it should increase the reaction rate. Okay, so if I add a catalyst, then the rate should increase. So again, I focused on increasing the rate of reaction. And I wanted to increase the rate of reaction by, again, increasing the temperature and or increasing the concentration and or adding um, a catalyst to your reaction. And all of those, are, or if you do them all together at one time, you will get a, you know, a drastic change. Think about this new temperature here. Can you imagine if you upped the concentration? Besides, you would get a much faster reaction rate. All right, so I hope that helped um, you understand those factors that affect reaction rate. And how it goes along with these two graphs. I'm just going to show you one more time how it kind of, you know, temperatures are different and so are adding a catalyst. And then how it also changes, you know, a little bit, you get a different, you know, a unique pathway, whether it's endothermic or exothermic, it doesn't matter. And again, we were altering these three conditions every time, which is all part of collision theory and the rate of reaction. So that's my previous video. If you didn't watch it, that might be a good thing to watch. And I hope this video helped you understand the factors that affect the rate of a reaction. Good luck, chemists.